Welcome back, Fly Tires. Tying Tuesday once more. Gonna tie a cool little soft hackle for you today. Um, a, uh, I would say maybe a new age soft hackle, not the traditional light soft hackle, not a, not a spider fly or anything like that. This is a bead headed jig fly, um, sort of merging those worlds together, right? Which you see a lot these days. You get a, a jigged hook with a heavy bead on it, throw a soft hackle on there, and you can fish it in a lot of different ways. Uh, so this is a really cool one here. This is the Bloom's Optic Nerve. So a really cool bug, um, built with some great materials, good little attractor fly, one to have around um, in a lot of different situations. So let's get to it, Bloom's Optic Nerve. And we're starting out on a jig style hook. This is from Umqua. This is their XT500. So it's a, a unique one because you don't see a lot of jigged flies with a barb. So if you, if you do want to fish with a barb, you have that option and you can also come in and pinch it down like you've been seeing us do pretty often recently. So we'll lock that on in. I already have my bead on there. This is a slotted tungsten bead uh, in the brown color, modeled brown, tactical bead, a great little option to have. You can do a lot of different things in regards to the bead color on this fly. Uh, I think traditionally it's a copper style bead or you can go with something a little bit flashier, a pink, um, a red, an orange, all kinds of different things you can play around with there. Starting out, we're gonna utilize some thread, obviously. We got our classic wax thread from Semperfly. This is a six aught. And I'm just gonna start it and lay down a thread base here. And if you prefer, you could use a UTC or, or whatever thread you're comfortable with. I really like this. Semperfly Classic Wax. It's got a nice dyed color to it, a really rich red. That works great for the collar when we get finished here. So I'll lay down a little bit of a thread base. I'm not gonna worry too much about that bead moving around right now. If you wanted this to be a weighted pattern, you could always do that and throw down some lead or lead free wire. But for this one, I'm gonna leave it a little bit lighter. It still does have a tungsten bead, so sufficient amount of weight to fish in most situations without needing to add too much weight, but you can always come back and do that. Um, and then we're gonna, so now we're gonna go ahead and tie in our tail, some pheasant tail, and this is the brown color. Do it in natural or some of the different dyes that are out there. A lot of options in the fly tying material world these days. So we'll tie that in. In a traditional sense, the length of our shank. And then we can clip out the excess. I'm gonna save that excess. That'll be my body wrap once we get back through there. So just go ahead and clean up, make sure everything's nice and smooth transition. Maybe work on a little bit of a taper here. And then we can come in and add our ribbing which is a little bit of UTC wire in brassy for this size. I'm tying a size 12 today. It's a mid shank jig hook, so not an extra long. It's a, a pretty standard shank for this size fly. And then that hook is a 60 degree down eye. So if you're looking to, to find it, um, obviously this Uncle one's a good option, but there's other brands that make quality jig hooks as well. We'll go ahead and tie that in right along the side of the bug and hang it out the back in our material clip until we're ready to rib. And I can go right into tying in that pheasant tail that I saved. I'm just gonna tie it in on the tip so that I have plenty of room to wrap it forward and make sure it's nice and secure. Then we'll walk our thread out of the way this is another opportunity to work on that taper slightly. Don't want to get out of control, but make it a nice realistic taper here. And then I'm going to leave my thread about a full bead size back to give myself room to finish off the front end of this fly. Again, not a traditional soft tackle in the sense that it's going to be lightweight and fished on the swing. You can fish it on the swing, definitely, um, but also going to be, be fishable in a Euro rig uh, under an indicator. 
You can have it as a dropper if you got a, a buoyant enough dry fly. I lost a couple of pheasant tails there, but I think I'm going to be okay anyway. But yeah, if you have a large enough dry fly, a big old chubby Chernobyl, an Amy's ant, something like that, you can still hang this heavier weight attractor nymph off of that. So once we got our body fully covered there, we can capture her. And secure that down with some nice locking wraps in front and behind and then clip out that excess. Then we're going to go ahead and rib it and bring that wire forward, counter wrapping, five or six times up and securing that in place as well. And we can break off that excess and save it for the next fly. Get my hook more secure there. There we go. All right, so the next material we're gonna add is a little bit of UV ice stub as a hot spot. Also allows the coming materials to be propped up and out the way that we want them to. So we're gonna noodle on a good bit of, of ice stub here. Make a nice bump, a little bit of a tractor trigger color here. Right where that thorax transitions into the abdomen, but leaving ourselves enough room for a couple of different materials. The first one being this Colde Canard, the CDC, I'm using a little bit of brown, uh, not the puffs, you want the full length feathers here. So I'm gonna take this and sort of brush it out, get those to flare out off of the side of the feather. And then we'll come down and create a dubbing noodle. I'm gonna tie in two different soft hackle uh, materials here. So I want to maximize my space so that rather than tying in the feather, I'm gonna create a dubbing noodle here and add it that way. So we'll use a dubbing noodle with our rising Gallops dub loop tool, get our thread out of the way. And then we can come in and slide in the CDC. And we're gonna use the full length of the barbels coming off of this feather. Trap them right up close. And then come in and snip off that feather. I have these nice long bladed razor scissors from Dr. Slick. They're the hair razor scissors. So it makes this type of work a little bit easier just having that longer blade to utilize. Very sparse the CDC in this but it adds a lot to the pattern. So I'm going to spin up that material real nice and go ahead and wrap it on down as I do so sort of brushing it rearward right up against the um, ice stub that we have in place there. CDC is one of those amazing natural materials that just adds great movement to any bug when you add it in. And as we go, pulling it all back, sort of laying on top of it. And then when I come in to do the partridge, that's gonna to help to lay it all down as well. So sort of messy looking right now, but that's all right. So 
sneak some thread in, lock that doubling loop in place so it's not coming free on us. And then we can clip it out and get our partridge ready. I'm just gonna make a nice even base as much as possible to lay that partridge down on top. So now we got some nice CDC coming out the back and we're gonna go over the top of it with some partridge here. So I got my feather started there. I pulled off all of the um, duffier fibers there, left with just the tip. I'm gonna grab that with some hackle pliers here. Grab the tip with some hackle pliers so that I can brush it all towards the rear and then tie it in tip first. So a nice easy tip there to tie in. A couple of wraps that way, pull it back, you can trim it out, you can leave it in if you want your collar to be a little bit more full. And just make sure that's not gonna come loose on us with a nice half hitch and then we can wrap it forward. So same thing, we're gonna sort of pull these rearward and lay down a few wraps. And you're only gonna go around two or three times with it until you got nothing but bare stem left. And you can always go a little more sparse if you like your soft tackles to be a little more sparse. Definitely opportunity to make them the way that you want them here. And once we've gone around, we'll come back in with our thread and secure that in. And then I'm gonna make a nice, thick, hot spot collar on this fly. So once it's secure again, clip out the extra material. Always gotta get rid of that extra material. And then lay down a nice red, red collar on it. Give the fly a whip finish. And you have a great little attractor fly. Works great as a stone fly. Um, just an attractor soft tackle. You can tie them in different colors, a little bit lighter variations if you use a lighter pheasant tail. Um, this is a little bit of a darker one with some darker CDC and partridge, but you can play around with that as well. Cool little fly. Definitely one that's going to put a lot of fish in the net. If you're fishing something like a Guide's Choice Hare's Ear, um, this is something that you can substitute that might have a little bit more pop uh, and grab some attention a little bit with those bright colors that are incorporated into it. So, Cool little bug, versatile on a jig with the soft tackle. A uh, great one to get out there and fish with. So thanks for watching.